Hey there, this is Peter and welcome to another Take a Break with Valley CAD. This video is going to be geared towards those of you that are new to SOLIDWORKS. That's right, this video is a shout out to you. I remember what it was like when I first got SOLIDWORKS and I was super excited about it. I was going around and I was clicking all the things and then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, what are all these things? Well, in this video, we're going to start off with the basics of SOLIDWORKS. And actually what we're going to look at is how to make our first sketch based feature and I'll let you know it only takes five simple steps. So let's get your favorite cup of coffee or your favorite cup of tea. Let's hop on over SOLIDWORKS to learn those simple five steps to make your first sketch based feature. Hey there, welcome to SOLIDWORKS. So you open up a brand new part file in SOLIDWORKS and you're going, what the heck is this? What is that? And what's that other thing down there, right? Well, just to let you know, what we're gonna be coming in is looking at those five first steps to make your sketch based feature. Those five steps are listed here. First one is you select a plane or planar surface. Step two, you activate the sketch command. Step three, you start making the geometry that you want. And you'll hear the term entities as well. Step four, and by the way, this is the most important step. You need to come in and add relations and driving dimensions. Then step five, it's a fun one. You just simply extrude out whatever you sketched. So now that we kind of know those five simple steps there, let's get a little familiar with SOLIDWORKS here as well. So on the left side of my screen, this is called my design tree. Your design tree actually comes in and it shows the history of your part. So it, SOLIDWORKS is based off of features. So as you make features that make up your part file, they'll be listed in this thing called a feature manager design tree. Okay. Now, since we don't have any features or anything that's made, making up this part, we don't see any of that yet. But what I do see here is my front, top, right, and origin. These are considered your primary planes, your front, top, and right. And what's unique about all these planes here is that as I clicked on each one of them, you'll see that they all come together and where they all intersect is right here on top of the origin. Okay, so think of origin as home. It's crucial and you wanna work around that guy as much as possible. Okay, so now what we wanna do is start up step one. Step one was click on a plane or planar surface. Well, a planar surface is anything that's flat on existing geometry. Well, I don't see any existing geometry, so I'm gonna utilize one of my planes. In this scenario, I'm gonna click on the front plane. When you click on the front plane there, and also it works on any of these other planes, you'll see I have an icon here and it shows like a little C shape there. And that C shape has a little asterisk or star on it. Just to let you know, whenever you see a little star thing on top of an icon, that means create something new. All right. So that's one way to create a new sketch on a plane, or you can even come up to your sketch tab here. This is part of your command manager across the top of your screen, and you'll see a sketch icon there too. Both of those icons will create a sketch for you. So I'm going to simply create, create it from here. So I am in a sketch. And by the way, I just completed step number two activate the sketch command done. Now, how do I know I'm in a sketch? Well, my user interface has changed slightly. There are some dead giveaways to tell you that you are in a sketch command. The first one that I always look at is my origin. If you notice when I was outside of a sketch, my origin was blue. Now that I'm in a sketch, my origin turned red. Okay. The other thing to note here is at the top of my screen, it says sketch two of part two. Now that's SOLIDWORKS way of saying, hey, you're currently in a sketch command and it's of this part file. Then the other way that I can tell that you are in a sketch or not is this thing in the top right corner. Not many SOLIDWORKS users actually know what this corner is called. This is actually called your confirmation corner. So those of you that are watching this video right now and you now remember that it's called your confirmation corner, you are now ahead of the curve. Congratulations. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at here that tells us that we are in a sketch is down here on this thing called a status bar. This is telling you, hey, what's the status of your sketch? And also, what the heck are you doing right now? So it says editing sketch two, and it's currently underdefined. 
We'll come back to that under the fine state while we're gonna come into step four, which is gonna be coming up after step three, right? We haven't done step three yet. Step three is coming in and creating your geometry. Hey, this is a kind of a fun part here. So now we know that we are in a sketch. Let's come in and make some geometry. As you look under our sketch tab here, you'll see all these icons here. These are creating new entities to make up your geometry in your sketcher. So in this scenario, I'm gonna come in and make a rectangle and we'll simply come in and I'm gonna do a center to corner rectangle and click from here and just simply drop it like so. Done, I created my geometry there. Now, one thing to note here, SOLIDWORKS is a feature-based modeling software. And so it uses features to make up its geometry. One thing to note here is while you're making sketches, keep them simple. Okay, so I like to think of the acronym KISS. No, not K-I-S-S, -S, you know, keep it simple, smarty. Eh? Um, it's actually K-Y-S-S, -S. keep your sketches simple. Okay, so K-Y-S-S. -S. So now that we are keeping that in mind of keeping our sketches simple, we're gonna keep it as we see it now. So I just completed step three. Now I need to work on step four. Most important one, this is looking at creating relations and driving dimensions. We're telling rules of our sketch. Cause I also let you know, in case you don't know this, SOLIDWORKS is a parametric 3D modeling software. Now parametric, that's not a term that I use quite often. Well, I do now because I eat, sleep and breathe SOLIDWORKS. But before that, I was like parametric, what the heck is this thing? Well, what I like to do is look at the word parametric and I break that word down. So I think of the word param. Oh, parameters. And an easier word than parameters is a word rules. So SOLIDWORKS is a software that's based off of rules. And how we apply those rules are with driving dimensions and relations, okay? So what are these relations that I keep talking about? Well, as I look at my sketch here, you see these little green squares, right? These are actually relations, or you also hear the term constraints. Those get used um, interchangeable, actually. So as I look, uh, for instance, on the left side of my square here, I should actually say rectangle, you'll see it has a little green square and it shows a dot in the middle of a line. That is saying that this has a midpoint relation, and that's between this horizontal line and that vertical line. And so this horizontal line is terminating at the midpoint of this vertical line. And how do I know it's vertical? Well, this little green square here shows a black vertical line. That's saying this line is always gonna be vertical. So if you're sketching your, your geometry and you're intentional on how you click, guess what? SOLIDWORKS will start snapping relations for you. But if you have a scenario where you did not do that, let's say I drew a line like so and another one like this and I need to set up a rule that says these two guys need to always be parallel to each other. Well, if I simply click on one line, hold down control, click on the other line, I get all these little icons here. And by the way, that also shows up on the left side of your screen here too. These are relations that you can add between on the geometry that you clicked on. So for instance, I wanna make these guys parallel. So I'll click on that. Now those lines are always gonna be parallel to each other. All right, so that's just a little introduction on creating relations. Now, when you're doing step four, you know, creating relations and dimensions, you wanna start off with relations first, then dimensions. So in this scenario, I got all my relations that I needed. So now I'm gonna come in and put in my dimensions. And whenever you start off with your very first part, you wanna come in and put your very first dimension as your largest dimension first. So arts will come in and it will scale your sketch based off of your very first dimension. So for instance, I come in here and that says 5.63. I'm gonna bump that up to 12. You'll notice that my sketch didn't all of a sudden get big. What it did is it scaled everything to match a 12 inch dimension. Now from there, you'll notice that I have some blue entities and black entities. You never wanna have a sketch. Well, I shouldn't say never, but honestly 99.9% .9 of the time, you do not wanna have blue entities in your sketch. What that means is that your sketch is underdefined, which is not good in SOLIDWORKS because SOLIDWORKS is a parametric 3D modeling software, meaning it needs rules to work as intended. So with that said, I need to specify, hey, how tall is this vertical line? 
I'll simply click on that and I'll say that needs to be five in inches tall. Now you'll see that all my blue entities are now black. That means that I have fully defined my sketch and I can also tell because in my status bar, it says fully defined. And also, by the way, on my feature manager design tree, it says sketch number two. If I get rid of that five millimeter there, or five inches, sorry, you'll notice that it'll say a minus sign in front of that sketch number two name. That's SolidWorks way of saying, hey, this is a sketch that is underdefined. Okay, so five, drop that back down and say okay to that. Okay, so I just completed step four. Remember, most important step, you wanna put in dimensions and relations. So now step five is simply coming in here and we're gonna extrude out this sketch geometry. So I'm gonna come under my features tab and select extruded boss base. Now, I, I have young ones at home and I don't know if you've played with the Play-Doh machine or you know if you have kids that play with the Play-Doh machine, what I think of when I'm working in SolidWorks is I think of a Play-Doh machine. Yes, I know that's pretty silly, but what I think of is, hey, here's a shape. So if you ever played with those Play-Doh machines and you set up like a star, right? And you push Play-Doh through that star. Well, as the Play-Doh goes through, it's gonna make a star shape and it extrudes it out however far you want that Play-Doh to go. Same setup in SolidWorks. So I have a rectangle shape here and now I need to extrude out that rectangle X amount of inches. In this scenario, I'm gonna come in and say be two inches long like so, uh oh, fat finger that one, two inches long like that, and simply click the green check mark. And that completed my five step process. So remember, step one, you wanna click on a plane or planar surface. And by the way, planar surface is anything that's perfectly flat on existing geometry. Step two is you wanna activate the sketch command. Step three, sketch your geometry. Remember, K Y S S, keep your sketches simple. Then step four, you're gonna be coming in and doing dimensions and relations. Most important step, by the way, can't stress it enough, most important one. And then step five, you get to play with Play-Doh and extrude out your geometry. If you'd also like to see this five-step process in a PDF form, simply come down to the link below to fill out a, hey, send me a link form, and we'll be happy to send that up to you. Other than that, hopefully you learned something pretty cool here, and also you enjoyed your favorite cup of coffee or tea. And have a great rest of the day, and make sure you learn something new. See ya!